Hey guys, it's Adam. I want to take a moment and personally thank you for listening to our shows, for downloading our shows, and for sharing them with your friends. With your guys' support, we just moved the Twisted 10 into the threshold of the top 100 comedy shows in iTunes. It made it to number 99. Granted, just barely crept in there. However, that's still monumental for us. Out of the tens of thousands of podcasts that are out there, that's one of the most difficult categories to breach into. Thank you very, very much for helping us to get there. If you haven't already done so, please go give us a five-star rating and give us a review, a short little one-line, two-line review, letting us know that you enjoy the show. iTunes reviews are like podcast currency. It legitifies the show, it allows us to get better guests, and it allows our sponsors to really see that we're reaching the listeners that are out there. If you haven't done so yet, please go do it. We would greatly appreciate it. We've got a ton on the horizon from Dichotomy Media, a lot more on our YouTube channel, more Get Out Penny cartoons, all sorts of stuff. So please help us by giving us that five-star rating and a little review. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. Team on 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to The Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique post-created top ten lists, recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tac Van Sickle, Adam Poston, Jay Alvarez, and me, Andrea Joy. Hey, that's cool. And I don't call myself host. I call myself the chief executive fish nerd of the Fish Nerds podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had pre interviewed me without drinking so much, we would have made a little better progress on this. Thanks for having me. I got to tell you, when Andrea showed me your show, I thought, ah, oh, that's kind of dumb. I can't wait to hear it. So I downloaded her episode, loved it. And then the one about sex uh, fetishes, loved it. And then I downloaded the entire back catalog, loved them all. And then I subscribed to your Patreon, giving you guys money because I love what I wish I had thought of it because I'm pissed off that you're going to win big with this one. It's Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am pretty, so that's a great idea. I love it. Doc Martin. Yeah, well, so the Fish Nerds podcast, we came out, uh, gosh, I say we all the time, I get in trouble for this, but originally I had a co-host, his name was Dave Callum, and we went on a quest to catch and eat every kind of freshwater fish in New Hampshire. And we were writing for a bunch of magazines and newspapers, and the goal was to write a book 
uh, which ultimately ultimately did not happen. We wrote a lot of it, but we our agent disappeared, and and the magazines we were writing for went out of business. Uh, and so we thought, okay, what's next? Let's make a podcast. Because how hard could that be? <laughs> it's not as easy as one might think. Uh, but we did it anyway. We launched the Fish Nerds podcast, uh, which, uh, we, gosh, we're 160 some odd episodes in. My partner, Dave, ha- I killed him off in the fall. So it's just me now and a bunch of uh, Fish Nerds correspondents who do some work for the show. And we're a variety show, a magazine show. Uh, so we're not like one hour long interviews or like two hours of boring, how to tie a fly line to your rod. We tell stories. We laugh a lot. We got biologists, fishermen. Um, artists, all kinds of people on the show, comedians, uh, and we just try to have a good time talking about fish because every culture is impacted by fish. Uh, so we all have that in common, and so we can bring people together and laugh a lot, and that's the goal. Oh, you mean the two guys, uh, the still left two guys fishing? I thought you were talking about logo. So yeah, that's me on the album artwork. And that animal that stuck to me is a three-foot-long parasite called the sea lamprey. Uh, in order to get that picture, I had to let that sea lamprey bite me about 25 times. There was a lot of blood involved. But it's a good picture. It's a good picture. Uh, but but in, in fairness, uh, that's a female sea lamprey, uh, Petromyzin marina, stone sucker of the sea. Uh, after she bit me, I ate her. So I win. I always win. (laughs) What do you guys speak Spanish? It's like arroz de lamprilla or something like that. Sure. And, and I forgive you, too, because I was supposed to come on the day after Father's Day, and you bumped me because some famous person wanted to be on your show. Um, yeah, so I, I, I caught that. I forgive you, but my list is, is related to that day, and I'm not changing it, but I had a plan. <laughs> Yeah, I accept it. <laughs> I call them Fish Nerd Nation or Fish Nerds or yeah. It's genius. It's genius. I'm a nerd. I can't catch. Okay. Hi. Welcome to the Fish Nerds Twisted 10. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks, guys. Uh, So for those who weren't paying attention, I'm Clay Groves, Chief Executive Fish Nerd of the Fish Nerds Podcast. And I've got a top 10 fishy parents list because I was planning on putting this list out around Father's Day before you guys pushed me back. 
I, I, I'm not bitter. I just like to drill. All right, I'm going to, do you want to just jump right in here and start? Right, you'll say, ah, 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 and we'll, so, all right, so uh, each one of these has a little bit of a, a funny quote. All right, so I wrote this list, uh, and this is top 10 fishy parents. Uh, and you'll see the twist here as we get going, okay? Uh, and this one is uh, titled, Of Course I Love You, or Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Uh, and there's a fish called an African uh, cichlid. And cichlids are little tiny, like the most common freshwater fish in the world. They're just little guys. And these are known as mouth uh, brooders. Do you know what mouth brooding means? Yeah, they're, they're very common aquarium fish. And the really cool thing about these fish is they're mouth brooders, which means they raise their babies in their mouth. But here's what you're going to like. The African cichlid is also a mouth breeder. So here's how this works. The female, the male makes a nest and stirs up the dirt and shakes around like a maniac to attract the female in. If it works, she comes in, he gets her excited, right? And she ends up like dropping all of her eggs in a big pile on the rocks. And then he starts bumping into her a lot and shaking around and swimming around her a lot. And then she puts all the eggs in her mouth, okay? Then on his anal fin, he's got these two spots that look just like cichlid eggs, and she thinks they're eggs. So she goes and tries to pick up those last two eggs. When she bites him on his anal fin, he sperms in her mouth, fertilizes the eggs, and she keeps them there t- until they hatch. <laughs> oh, I know. I so I've I've got these markers. I've painted myself with these two little dots just in case. <laughs> Right. So chicken wings. All right. Yes. <laughs> Small glass. All right. So that's number 10. Uh, 10. We do 10 through 6, right? So that's the African cichlid. And second one is the ultimate honey-do list. Number 9. All right, and this one, uh, this one is just kind of a a, uh, a a male fish who does all the work. So he gets the ultimate honey do list. It's this seahorse, and as you know, females actually deposit eggs into the pouch of a male's abdomen, and he releases them after they uh, after they hatch and they can swim on their own. So he takes care of all the work. He's like Mr. Mom, and she just does all the. She's like a guy, like she just impregnates the guy, and she goes away and does her own thing. Female fish power. Fun fact about seahorses, they are the most accurate hunter in the animal kingdom. They have a kill rate of 97%. They're killing fish they're eating or a little tiny plankton or whatever, but they have perfect aim. Whereas most fish or most animals miss most of the time when they're trying to hunt or fish. So. You've exceeded my knowledge. I think he did, he did in the old uh, Hanna Barbera cartoons. I have, yeah. According to the 
Oh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Number eight. I was waiting for that. All right. Uh, this is called, You Want Me to Put What Where? Uh, and this is about a blue-lined octopus. This is not a fish, but I like this one a lot. Uh, you're going to like this. So male uh, blue-lined octopuses. These are little tiny, like six-inch octopus. They have, uh, and one arm is shorter than the rest. And that arm is their sex arm. That's the only job of that arm is to make new octopuses. No, no, it actually uh, delivers a package it's called a packet of sperm, a handful of sperm, basically, to the female. And in order to mate, he has to deliver that sperm under the mantle of the female and impregnate her in her oviducts, right? Am I teaching you about sex? I just turned to... So in order to pregnant, he has to do that. Now, uh, they can't tell males from females. They all look the same until you measure that arm or until you try to implant a packet of sperm. So they often will grab other males and have a handful of sperm and shove it into the other male until they find out, oh, you're... Yeah, it's like, hey, sorry, Joe, I didn't mean to do that. And, and then, then when they act with a female, females are not always receptive to males, just like any other animal. Uh, the males do all the trying to figure out how to get laid work. So these guys want it so bad, they will chew their own arm off while it has a packet of sperm. That arm will swim by itself to the female and climb under the mantle and deliver the packet of sperm. Yeah, it's totally real. Yeah, you're totally right. And so that arm, that that specific arm is job is to make babies, so it drives right into that mantle and delivers it over and over and I have, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. They barf, yeah. Only, yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> All right, so that was the uh, number eight. N number seven. Thank you. I wish Jay was here. All right, so this is <laughs> this is titled "What Have You Done for Me Lately?" What have you done for me lately? Uh, and this is the uh, the angler fish. This is those big fish that live in the bottom of the ocean with the little lantern uh, on top of the fish. Now, here's a really cool thing. Female angler fish have put up with deadbeat dads uh, who literally attach themselves to the females to become parasites. So here's what happens. Here's how these fish mate. Female angler fish are big, and the males are tiny, tiny animals. Uh, and they have one job as an adult, and that's to make babies. So these little animals are full of sperm. They find the female, and they bite her. And they don't let go ever again. And they become fused to her body, turning into gonads. And their job is stay attached to the female until she's ready to reproduce. And their job only deliver sperm when she's ready for her egg laying. So the males literally become fused to the female and become sperm generating machines to make more babies. So, Yeah, I tell you what, you know, so you think about this, right? Like with animals and with, with most things in life, sex is a dangerous thing. You think about how many animals die to get laid. It must feel good to everybody because the, the amount of work it takes for an octopus or an angler fish or even some spiders to, to make babies, they die doing it or they get their heads eaten up by like other animals. Uh, it must be amazing to be worth all that effort because uh, if it sucked, you, you wouldn't have animals.
<laughs> so do we. It, it, it fuses permanently and becomes a parasite. And so it will never let go. It's connected mouth to ass, uh, human centipede style almost. All right, so do you guys fish? All right, when you were a kid fishing fresh water, what was the most common fish you caught? <laughs> Yeah. Catfish are everywhere. So, but the most common freshwater fish people fish for are are little sunfish, little cute sunfish. They're everywhere. You got them in Florida, and they have different names everywhere you go. But uh, our our friend, the bluegill sunfish, one of our very common. Uh, fish here in North America. Uh, he has the award for the uh, most understood spouse ever. And here's why. Uh, sunfish are very territorial. The males, the bulls, the big tough ones, build these huge nests, right? They're, big, they're called reds. They're big circles in the sand. They're like 24 inches across. Yeah, and they guard that like crazy. They don't let anybody, any other male come in. But females come on in, and they're like, oh, come on, baby, come on in here. And they'll have a harem of females. And their job is to like get those females' legs and spawn with them. Uh, but but there are other males who want to mate with those females that are in that in that nesting area. And those are called sneaker males. And they want to sneak in and spawn with those females. To do so, they have to disguise themselves, right? This goes back to oh, your old Bugs Bunny days, right? What did Bugs... Yeah, it's very bosom buddies, right? So... Yeah. So, so the sneaker males actually physically change their body color and their structure a little bit until they look just like female bluegills. And they swim up to the big bulls and they're like, hey, sweetheart, I'm going to come in. He's like, oh, come on. I'm going to have you in here. And they go in there and then they're like, hey, baby, it's just me. And the females are so impressed. They spawn with him and his genes get spread. And the big bull is sitting there going, I need more ladies. So he doesn't know that there's all kinds of orgy happening right behind him while those sneaker males are sneaking in. So those are the bluegill, our most understood spouse. So, yeah. Yeah, because they worked so hard to get in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're fantastic. Mm hmm. Right. 
The fun thing about catching skates is they always feel bigger than they are because of their body shape. So they get sideways in the water and they're like a big kite and they're just catching. It's like a sailboat coming in in the water and just dragging all that water behind them. So great fun. I love I love skates. Yeah, catfish are cool. And have you held, so you held catfish, right? So their their skin, they don't have scales. Their skin is covered in taste buds. And so when you're holding a catfish, it actually can taste you. It's, it's still funny. Oh, and their their spikes are covered in bacteria and all kinds of slime that hurts a lot. A lot of people will claim that, like those common catfish, that's probably was a brown bullhead, probably are poisonous. They are not poisonous, no venom in those, but uh, it hurts for a long time and more than just getting stuck with something. It is terrible. There are catfish, like in New Hampshire, we have a fish called the margin mad time that's three inches long and is venomous. So you get the same thing, plus you get the joy of a neurotoxin. So you get both. No. No, it feels like a lionfish sting, only a smaller scale because the fish is only three inches long. So it's not a big deal. Just wreck your afternoon. Uh, but he'll be okay. Yeah. But you can get even by eating them. And that's, you know, what I did. So. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't screw with me. I'll eat you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Although I, I, uh, I get a little afraid once in a while. When I catch, like, for example, like last year I caught an Atlantic salmon, which is very good on sushi, right? Uh, but I caught it fresh. I filleted it. I threw it on the grill because I, I was going to eat it. Um, and and uh, as I was cooking it, this great big tapeworm came crawling up out of it. Right. So I pulled the tapeworm off, took its photo, threw it in the fire, fed the wife to my wife, fed the wife, fed the fish to my wife and kids, and then emailed a biologist. He goes, oh, that's a salmon tapeworm. And that's why if you're having sushi, you don't actually want fresh sushi. You want previously frozen fishes to be part of your sushi. So I got really afraid of sushi for a while. Um, and then my wife heard me on the podcast talking about feeding her tapeworms, and <laughs> that was a problem. <laughs> Theoretically. Yeah, so fresh sushi is a little scary. I mean, you could see the tapeworms. I mean, if you're cutting it yourself, you should, you should notice that. But, but fish are incredibly parasitic. There's so many parasites in fish. Uh, and most of your favorite fish in restaurants are full of parasites. Uh, and even, some of them, they even put under black lights and pull the worms out before they bring it to the kitchen to cook it for you. Thank you. 
Yeah, it's uh, it, it's things like things like cod and haddock are really full of worms. The big, the big, the big fish. That was that was six. So isn't it time for break? Yeah. Hey, Coco, have you ever heard of 1K Away? Well, it sounds like one of them groups that I hang out with every oh, Thursday. Gosh, no, 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 no. It's out of Sanford, Florida. It's a podcast by these two guys. They have no clue what they're doing. But you know what? It sounds awesome. They let black and ease like you into it. Oh, so many things to address there. But no, if you go to Google, just type in 1K Away. And if you go to Facebook, type in 1K Away. You'll find it. What the fuck is a Google? Oh, my God. Hey, Tech, you ever have that conversation with your girl about where to eat dinner and it always turns into that back and forth? I don't know. You pick. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while, yeah. Yeah? Well, I've got an answer for you next time that comes up. Oh, yeah? Where at? The Salty Fox in Melbourne off of Old Alley Boulevard. Oh, nice. You know, I've actually been there and the food was pretty awesome. Hell yeah, it was. They offer a great selection of paninis, shareable appetizers, soups and salads, and one of the best desserts I've ever had, the Funky Monkey. Oh, yeah. My favorite was the vintage options. They got this meal called Ramen Noodle on Crack. You just got to try it out. Done. That's definitely what I'm getting next time. Put the fun between your legs at the Salty Fox every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. with the Old Galley Arts District Bike Crawl. It's a four-mile bicycle ride down Pineapple Avenue with stops for food and beer all along the route. Be sure to visit the Salty Fox every Sunday for brunch from 11 to 4. Hey, isn't that the $10 bottomless mimosas brunch? Sure is. Enjoy your brunch while the Salty Fox's DJ spins throwbacks and top 40 hits. Salty Fox is located in the downtown O'Galley Art District on O'Galley Boulevard. Check them out on Facebook at facebook.com slash saltyfoxmelbourne or online at thesaltyfox.net. Hey listeners, be sure to mention you heard about the Salty Fox on our show and you'll get 10% off your meals. Village Idiot Pub. You locals know about it? You guys from out of town have to check them out. Village Idiot Pub is now a proud sponsor with Living Pod Carously and the Twisted Ten Podcasts. It's more than just about commercials, though. The cast here will be taking our show on the road to Village Idiot to record some episodes as well as hold events. They have over 30 beers on tap, including ciders and Hefeweizen, my favorite, as well as hundreds of bottle choices. Adam, you forgot my favorite, all the delicious wine. (laughs) So get your friends together and enjoy the board games, puzzles, and the giant Jenga. Let the owner Jason, as well as the rest of the staff there, take excellent care of your beer drinking needs. Mention either one of our shows to the staff and get 10% off your tab. Tuesday is open mic, Wednesday is trivia, Thursday is karaoke, Friday and Saturday night are live music. Visit them at 4 Harrison Street, Suite 103, Cocoa, Florida, or Village Idiot Pub on Facebook. And don't forget, they are a dog-friendly location, so bring your friends, family, and fur babies. Hey, it's Adam. If you enjoy the hosts or the content of the Twisted Ten, be sure to check out our other show. It's called Living Podcariously. While the Twisted Ten may get crass and explicit occasionally, it holds no water to Living Podcariously. We do get a little bit more rough and raw on that show. We have a lot of fun producing it and have had some awesome guests. And as always, thanks for listening. Yeah, in case someone's just coming in the middle, which I don't know how that happens in a podcast.
Okay, so here's a recap from the first half in case you weren't paying attention. Number 10 is she puts her money where her mouth is was the red, uh, sorry, was the uh, was the African uh, cichlid. I got the name wrong. African cichlid, and that is a mouth breeder. These fish literally uh, eat the air, their own eggs and then the male sperms in their mouths. That's number 10. Number nine was the seahorse, the ultimate honey-do list. Uh, the female puts all her eggs in the male's basket. He fertilizes them. He has the babies, and she disappears as a deadbeat mom, which is a new new thing. That's right, 97%, I hear. Although uh, Fish Nerds fans listening to this show will likely double-check that and tell me how wrong I am, but our show is mostly true, uh, and that's our out on that one. Um the uh, number eight was one of my favorites is you want me to put what where? And that's the blue lined octopus. Uh, and many octopuses deliver uh, sperm packets in their arm. This one chews its own arm off to deliver sperm to the female. That was number eight. I believe it does, but I don't know. Yeah. So octopus fans or octopodes fans will uh, let us know. Uh, all right. Uh, what have you done for le- me lately? What have you done for me lately? Number seven, the angler fish, where the male, in order to mate with the female, bites the ass of the female, fuses his mouth to her butt, uh, and becomes a gonad, being an on-demand sperm delivery sy- system. Yeah. So he's like the podcast of sperms, on-demand sperm. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and number six is the award for the most understood spouse ever, the bluegill, who have a group of males called the sneaker males, who literally can confuse the other males uh, by dressing themselves up as females, sneaking into the harem and mating with all the ladies. So the uh, cross-dressing fish, right? Yeah. By the way, I accept all all people's uh, way of living. We like them all, except for wrestlers. I don't like singlets. So, uh, personal vendetta. I like all kinds of people, except for those. <laughs> yeah, I threw that through there because I work at a summer camp, and I had and we do these every activities every night. And last week, some of the younger uh, counselors did a wrestling match for all the kids, and they were doing it in singlets, um, which. I just couldn't stomach it anymore. It was the only only thing I've ever seen that I just can't look at. The rompers? Yeah, I, 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 I support rompers as long as they're not skin tight. You know, I, I, I wouldn't wear one, uh, but I, it's, it, I, I, it don't, I don't understand it. Yeah, because I when I see you, I see um, Tack. I see you um, with your romper on, a fanny pack, a Bluetooth earpiece, and a vapor walking around. Uh, and to me, that's perfect. That's like the ultimate douchebag clothing wear, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> God, I hate those two. Don't start me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Terrible. God. All right. Oh, now I'm sad. Thanks. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. So let's let's jump back to um our list. All right. We're about to item number five here. <laughs> God. Uh, and this list is who wants to be the dad? And all the rest go, not it, not it, not it, not it. And this is the blue, blue streaked cleaner wrasse. Uh, and this is a really cool fish. These are reef fish. You have them down your way. They live in giant groups. Uh, one female and a, uh, sorry, one male 
and a whole bunch of females, right? Uh, so that one male's job is to mate with all the females in his harem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Now, if <laughs> if he gets eaten by something or speared by a spear fisherman, uh, no other male will move into that harem. Instead, what will happen is one of those females has to become a male and do the job as male. So these are fish are, can change sex. A lot of fish can do this. And so they will change from female from female to male, and then take on that role as harem manager. And that's the Blue Street Cleaner Rass. Uh, and I don't know how they decide which one gets to be the male. I think they all put their fin on their nose and go, not it, until the... Uh... And then suddenly he's a dick. He pees standing up, doesn't put the toilet seat down. Terrible. Well, the male is gone. They don't do it unless he's got to get. He's gone. So it's only in these groups of fish, only one male gets to be around. I lost track. All right, let's go. Uh, let me. All right. So number. <laughs> are we at number four already? Number four. Um, these fish are large and in charge. These are white suckers. These are a sucker fish. They live up in uh, most of the country, and they're really big fish. They got a mouth in the bottom. They they swim around like vacuuming the bottom of the lake, uh, eating whatever crap they can get their mouth on. Uh, and white sucker females, or the mamas, are about twice the size of the males. They're huge. And in order to get them excited to spawn, they need at least two males uh, to get in with them to make them do it. So these are like these require a menage a trois to reproduce. So the female swims in, the males come up on either side, and they just shake, shake, shake all together until she gets excited. She drops all her eggs. Both of them blow all their sperm all over the eggs, and then they sit. They all leave and... And other fish eat their eggs, but that's they require a threesome to have babies. Yeah, now Andrea, how do you feel about the devil's threesome? <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> All right. You guys have nothing else on that. All right. So, number three. Right. This is the. Oh, you're thundering like crazy here now. Yeah. Oh, it's it's crazy hot here in New Hampshire today. All right. This is uh, ten thousand Le Leche leagues under the sea. The Le Leche League is a group of women who get together and uh, encourage more breastfeeding or help uh, to facilitate breastfeeding. In fact, um, when, when I had my kids, my father-in-law heard about this. We're, my wife was breastfeeding our kids, and she was saying, oh, I'm, I'm joining the Le Leche League to go down and get some help breastfeeding. And my father-in-law, you know, the old guys, he goes, sounds like a bunch of lesbians to me. And... Nothing to do with this fish, but anyway, 10,000 Leche Leagues Under the Sea, the breastfeeding fish. Um, and this fish is called the discus fish. And researchers have discovered a discus fish parent with mammalian-like uh, moms. These fish uh, feed their young from mucus secreted on the surfaces of their skin. Uh, the, the content of that mucus is almost identical to what's found in, ma in mammal breast milk helps them to uh, develop and develop immunities to other things and feeds them. So we actually have a fish that feeds their babies on a milk-like mucus. I always tell people there's nothing special about fish. And uh, like, when, like when people are talking about like, you know, mammals, you know, there's six things all mammals have in common. We know reptiles because there's all these things they have in common. When fish... There's nothing about fish that makes them special. Yeah. Yeah. So people people say, oh, all fish have backbones. You're like, no, they don't. All fish have fins. No, they don't. All fish have scales. Nope. All fish lay eggs. Nope. Oh, right. But not a, not a true fish. Oh, 
I know. It just makes me sad inside. I, it's funny. I, 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 um, when I was in high school, I had to perform in a Little Mermaid uh, at Bush Gardens. Under the sea. I hated the music from that. But, but when, when you're in show choir and a nerd, you suck it up and you stand and you go, sometimes it's better down where it's wet there. Take it from me. And you just do the work. Yeah. I, I will I will send you some Fishner's decals and a hat if you do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sometimes it's better down where it's wet there. Take it from me. Anyway, that was the discus fish number two. We're almost done. All right, this mama has it all figured out. This is the Engineer Gobi. Have you heard of Gobies? Mm, they're lovely. They are adorable little fish. Uh, these are called Engineer Gobies. When Engineer Gobies mature, the male and female shack up in a cozy burrow in a reef. They dig a big giant hole and make this kind of like massive cave. Uh, they then have a ton of babies, and we're talking thousands of babies, and they quickly, they quickly leave the cave to forage for food. But, the, but instead of being gone forever, the kids come back to the cave every night and hang from the ceiling uh, in a group, like a bunch of bats. So you've got these two little mom and dad gobies in the bottom and this group of baby gobies hanging over their heads like a bat after eating all day. Um, well, we think that's what happens. Researchers have never seen an adult goby. They've only ever found the babies. Yeah, something happens. But what we think is happening and what researchers think is happening is the babies are actually caretaking for the parents. Uh, but they just never found the parents yet. And fish research is still a new thing, and they're discovering new, new species every day. Uh, and there, there's always so much to learn with fish. And likely, that by the time someone hears this story, they've already solved that problem, and I'm wrong. So, that, yeah. You know, there's no, there's water in there. It's underwater fish. That's true. That's true. And you could, you could find some fish that's roadkill, but these guys live in a cave under the sea because um, it's better where it's wetter. And So that's the engineer Gobi, uh, and then my favorite, uh, and this is the one that that Adam Adam has been excited about all day. This is number one, uh, and this is uh, titled "Will You Remarry When I'm Gone?" Sort of, uh, and this is the clownfish. This is the true story of Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. So, so as you recall in the movie Finding Nemo, what happened? To Nemo's mom. Good job. Yeah, ring the bell. That's amazing. All right, ring the bell. You got you got that right. Mama was eaten by a barracuda. Now, fun fact: clownfish mate for life. So uh, once they choose a mate, once the sorry, excuse me, once the male chooses a mate, they never choose a, a new. It is so sad. So what happened is, is Nemo's mom got eaten by a barracuda. Uh, and dad gets, um, by the way, I just watched your dog sniffing your cat's butt. That's right. I'm going to be your gonad. Uh, so, so these fish mate for life. And so mom died. So dad uh, goes through a chemical change in his body, and he actually physically becomes a female because the males will never choose another mate. Uh, and so in real life, what would happen is dad would turn to a female and then mate with the nearest male. Who was the nearest male in that? Nemo himself. Dad would mate with Nemo, and they live happily ever after. Best Disney movie ever. So it's uh, 
I know. It would be a very different me movie. <laughs> Well, bring it forward one more generation. Let's say Nemo's mom, dad, uh, whatever you want to call it, got eaten by a barracuda, and now Nemo's got new babies. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Orlando. Oh, I'm I'm glad the show is almost over. Um. <laughs> So we steal everything, don't we? So, so that's the uh, top ten amazing fishy parents. Yeah, I, I was worried about telling you in advance what I was going to do, but I, I wanted to do that one. My other list I came up with was uh, was top 10 bad fishing inventions, and I didn't put that out yet. So if you ever want me back again, we can... That's called letting me down gently. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't blame you. Someone, someone more famous who wants to talk about movies or something. <laughs> It's all good. It, it's all good. Yeah, so uh, our show can be found, you know, of course, all the places you get podcasts. And, of course, fishnerds.com is the website. And all of our action on social media happens through a private Facebook group called the Fish Nerds Podcast. So whenever whenever you're online looking for us, that's the best place to go uh, is Facebook. We're on the Twitter. We're on the Instagram. Um, I tried Snapchatting, but no one wanted to see me naked, so we skipped that. So that's... <laughs> uh, it's... Uh, you've, yeah... Hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a consummate never nude, so there's no chance to see me naked anyway. Oh, it's nasty out. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I love storms. Yeah, but I've been. I've been. I was happy to leave. <laughs> but I, I like visiting Florida. I went fishing in the highlands of Florida a couple of years ago. There's a kid down there named Lunker Louie who was like this 10-year-old fishing prodigy. And I, and I drove down there to fish with him for a day. Uh, and it was a totally insane, insane thing, just this kid who knew how to do everything. He was on the cover of a bunch of magazines. And his neighbors were these crazy racists. And they, had a, um, they actually had signs in their yard about why they shouldn't have black people living next door to them. In the, in the highlands. Um, but they would, um, when I was interviewing him, they had an airboat. And every time I turned the microphone on, they would turn the airboat on.
I, I can imagine. I fished. I went on a conference in Florida a couple of years ago in Orlando at a golf course. I don't golf. So I grabbed my ice fishing rods. I, I'm, a, I'm an ice fishing guide on the side. And I went ice fishing with well, – was ice fishing. But I was using my ice fishing gear to fish the ponds at the golf course, catching giant carp and catfish and tilapia and all kinds of stuff. And people are golfing around me. And they're like, I, are you allowed to fish here? I'm like, there's no sign. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to come down for PodFest or one of those kind of festivals at some point um, when I start earning some money. So uh, it'd be great. Yeah, I'm all in on that. I know, I I listened. <laughs> You're gonna love you're gonna love Patreon once it starts growing. We get about three hundred bucks a month on our Patreon, and it's the only reason our show is still on the air. And it's when your when your show is fan driven, it becomes for your people, and uh, it becomes a better show. And you already have a great show, and once your fans get in on supporting it, and it's important that they do, even if you have sponsors, that if you're giving money to a show, it becomes your show. So the fans will own your show once they pay you for it, and they should do it for you because your show is fantastic, and you deserve a dollar. Every listener gave you a dollar, you guys would be like thousandaires. You'd be... <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a twelve dollar heir. That's how I got here. I paid enough money to be on the air. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, lovely. I am Clay, Chief Executive Fish Nerd of the Fish Nerds Podcast, fishnerds.com.
Hey, that's cool. And I don't call myself host. I call myself the chief executive fish nerd of the Fish Nerds podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had pre-interviewed me without drinking so much, we would have made a little better progress on this. Thanks for having me. I got to tell you, when Andrea showed me your show, I thought, oh, that's kind of dumb. I can't wait to hear it. So I downloaded her episode, loved it. And then the one about sex uh, fetishes, loved it. And then I downloaded the entire back catalog, loved them all. And then I subscribed to your Patreon, giving you guys money because I love what you I wish I had thought of it because I'm pissed off that you're going to win big with this one. It's Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, accept it. <laughs> I call them Fish Nerd Nation or Fish Nerds or yeah. It's genius. It's genius. I'm a nerd, I can't catch. Okay, hi, welcome to the Fish Nerds. Well, I am pretty, so that's a great idea. I love it. Doc Martin. Yeah, well, so the Fish Nerds podcast, we came out, uh, gosh, I say we all the time, I get in trouble for this, but originally I had a co-host, his name was Dave Callum, and we went on a quest to catch and eat every kind of freshwater fish in New Hampshire. And we were writing for a bunch of magazines and newspapers, and the goal was to write a book, uh, which ultimately ultimately did not happen. We wrote a lot of it, but we our agent disappeared, and, and the magazines we were writing for went out of business. Uh, and so we thought, okay, what's next? Let's make a podcast, because how hard could that be? It's not as easy as one might think, uh, but we did it anyway. We launched the Fish Nerds podcast, uh, which, uh, we, gosh, we're 160-some-odd episodes in. My partner, Dave, ha I killed him off in the fall, so it's just me now and a bunch of uh, Fish Nerds correspondents who do some work for the show. And we're a variety show, a magazine show, uh, so we're not like one-hour-long interviews or like two hours of boring, how to tie a fly line to your rod. We tell stories. We laugh a lot. We got biologists, fishermen, 
um, artists, all kinds of people on the show, comedians. Uh, and we just try to have a good time talking about fish because... Hey guys, it's Adam. I want to take a moment and personally thank you for listening to our shows, for downloading our shows, and for sharing them with your friends. With your guys' support, we just moved the Twisted 10 into the threshold of the top 100 comedy shows in iTunes. It made it a number 99. Granted, just barely crept in there. However, that's still monumental for us. Out of the tens of thousands of podcasts that are out there, that's one of the most difficult categories to breach into. Thank you very, very much for helping us to get there. If you haven't already done so, please go give us a five-star rating and give us a review, a short little one-line, two-line review, letting us know that you enjoy the show. iTunes reviews are like podcast currency. It legitifies the show. It allows us to get better guests, and it allows our sponsors to really see that we're reaching the listeners that are out there. If you haven't done so yet, please go do it. We would greatly appreciate it. We've got a ton on the horizon from Dichotomy Media, a lot more on our YouTube channel, more Get Out Penny cartoons, all sorts of stuff. So please help us by giving us that five-star rating and a little review. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. Two. One, zero, and lift off. Five, ten, three, four. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique host created top ten lists, recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tac Van Sickle, Adam Poston, Jay Alvarez, and me, Andrea Joy. Every culture is impacted by fish, uh, so we all have that in common, and so we can bring people together and laugh a lot, and that's the goal. Oh, you mean the two guys, uh, the still left two guys fishing? I thought you were talking about logo. So yeah, that's me on the album artwork. And that animal that stuck to me is a three-foot-long parasite called the sea lamprey. Uh, in order to get that picture, I had to let that sea lamprey bite me about 25 times. There was a lot of blood involved. But it's a good picture. It's a good picture. Uh, but but in, in fairness, uh, that's a female sea lamprey, uh, Petromyzin marina, stone sucker of the sea. Uh, after she bit me, I ate her. So I win. I always win. <laughs> What do you guys speak Spanish? It's like arroz de lamprilla or something like that. Sure. And and I forgive you too because I was supposed to come on the day after Father's Day and you bumped me because some famous person wanted to be on your show. Um yeah, so I, I, I caught that. I forgive you, but my list is is related to that day, and I'm not changing it, but I had a plan. <laughs> so, 